All right, so food poisoning. Here are some of the diseases that are caused by food poisoning. And well, you, you recognize them. 80% of people are overweight in our society and or obese. Well, it's up to 39% are obese. That's one result of food poisoning is obesity. Of diabetes, uh, both type 1 and type 2, although any conversations that I make during this next hour will be about type 2 diabetes, not type 1, unless I specify type 1. So type 2 diabetes and its associated problems, a heart disease, yeah. food poisoning, uh, various kinds of inflammatory arthritis. One of the most fun problems that we treat at my clinic is inflammatory arthritis, like rheumatoid, lupus, psoriatic, cancers of the prostate, breast, colon, and many others are. In fact, even lung cancer and skin cancer are diet related to some extent. What do you think? Do you think what you put in your stomach could have anything to do with its health? <laughs> and if it took thanks to Nexium and the purple pill, we all know about GERD, right? Yeah, that's the only reason we know about it, is because of these manufacturers. They needed, they needed customers. The grandkids love this slide. <laughs> Yeah, they just rolled around on the floor after I showed them that one. Oh, when you decide, if you are a doctor or a patient, when you decide to uh, solve your problems, you must do it with the same fortitude that you deal with other problems. In my more than 50 years of medical practice, I have never seen a smoker quit by cutting down, ever. The only way I've seen quit is they said, today's the day, and I know I'll suffer for a while, and they don't do it again. I've never seen a drunk solve their problems by switching to beer and wine. I mean, there's only one way to do it. And so it is with food, is that you have to identify what the problems are, like the tobacco or the alcohol poisoning, and then you have to take a stand, like Nancy Reagan told the youths to do, one category of food poison is animal foods. Uh, animal foods are not our food. Uh, that's one of the basic problems, and that's because we're not designed as animal food eaters. We could go through all the anatomy and physiology, etc., and you would come down to the conclusion that we're built to eat not a carnivorous diet, but a plant-based diet. The second category of food poison is free oil. Okay, it's not the oil that's mixed up in the food naturally. It's free oil, like corn oil, safflower oil, olive oil, etc. That's the second category of food poisoning. So, if the first category is animal foods, the second category is free oils. Some of you, especially those who were brought here kicking and screaming, you're th sitting there thinking to yourselves, "Oh, what am I going to eat? There's nothing left." <laughs> Uh, that's until you discover starch and the importance of starch, is what I'm which is what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. This is the human diet. We are starch eaters, starch avoids, starch -itarians. Until you learn this, you will be out of control in your personal appearance as well as your health. Until you realize that we are starch eaters. This is the last taste bud discovered. This was discovered right here. What they did is they blocked the sweet tasting taste buds on the tip of the tongue. And they also blocked the conversion of amylase into simple sugar. And then what they did is they stimulated the subjects with various starchy foods. And they found that they responded to with starch taste buds that were previously unrecognized with a strength similar to that of the attraction to sugar, which is where we should get our energy from. So we have starch tasting taste buds as powerful as sugar tasting taste buds that help us secure our food. You know, bitter and sour are there to prevent, prevent us from poisoning ourselves, or they identify medicinal issues. The salt tasting taste bud is there, so we get minerals in for necessary, they're necessary for health. The sweet tasting taste buds, which we thought were the only ones there to attract us to our energy source. Taste buds just as powerful for starch. Not sugar, but starch. The other food in a healthy diet that you eat are non-starchy green and yellow vegetables. 
The problem here is that's what the emphasis is to people who are trying to change, uh, trying to eat a better diet. So they're being told to eat a nutrient-dense diet. A diet with uh, cauliflower, broccoli, kale, lettuce, etc. And they're actually told to eat a limited amount of starch with the belief that starches make you fat or for some other evil of starches. And people try this, this kind of eating, and they pretty soon say to themselves, well, my stomach is terribly grumbling. I'm starving to death. You can't do that. You'd have to eat 11 pounds of cabbage a day to live on these nutrient-dense diets. They're impossible. You have to get a calorie-dense source so that you can live. But some green and yellow vegetables are fine. If they're different than starches, do you understand? Okay, starches are what we call above ground and below ground. Above ground starches are seeds such as grains and legumes. And below ground, star or, uh, below ground storage organs are uh, root vegetables like tubers and potatoes, sweet potatoes, etc. So those are your main foods. These are side dishes for color, flavor, texture, aroma, maybe some nutrients. Actually, these do contain vitamin A and C, which is important if you're gonna eat an above ground source of starch. Because grains and legumes are inadequate in A and C. So if you're gonna eat a diet based on say rice only, you have to add a little bit of broccoli, a little bit of you know, orange, a slice of orange will do to get the A and C. However, below ground storage organs are complete. Uh, potatoes are known as the anti-scurvy vegetable. So you can live on a diet of potatoes and water. The starch must be the centerpiece. Uh, I think it's reasonable to add, for the reasons I gave you, these foods, and we do serve them at our program. And likewise, fruit is the other category of food uh, that you should be eating. How much? A mm, little bit, not a lot. Uh, fruits are familiar, they're tasty, people love to eat a lot of them, but I think two or three days fine. They're uh, simple sugars, they don't add much satiety. And that's the problem with people who try and be fruitarians, is they're constantly hungry. Because the simple sugars are digested real quickly. Whereas the starches, they break down slowly and they give you the energy all day long. So again, you should, yeah, I'm not recommending a whole food plant-based diet because it could be all fruits. I'm recommending a starch-based diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables and avoid food poisons.